Friday, here no, we go. I, birthday, I, Thursday. Nope. Happy birthday. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. Because <laughs> he doesn't have his paper. Fred Bull, October 6th, turning 80. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. That's incredible. Well done. Okay, you're supposed to read yours. I don't have any. <laughs> it's right there. Read it. Look at it. Caleb McLean, October 6th, turning 12. Just got accepted to the National Junior Honor Society. Dang. Well done, Ooh, Caleb. Smart Madison, kid. October 5th, turning 9. Chloe Lewis, September 17th. Happy birthday. Elijah, October 1st. Happy birthday. Jaden, September 27th. Happy birthday. And Chevy Chase. I love Chevy. Chevy I Chase's birthday. Chevy Chase is September 28th. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's good. Loved that. Fletch. Yeah. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah. We'll be right, we'll be right back. back. Good morning, welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. So good to have you with us today. Everything's ball bearings. Everything's ball bearings. I don't know if days. you knew that or not. <laughs> that's from, do it. That's from Fletch. Fletch was such a great movie. It was just, yeah, it was just magical. so magical. And a bunch of movies that weren't that funny. When you hit Fletch, you went, oh, wow, that was funny all Chevy the way Chase. through. Yeah, I love Chevy Chase. And he dressed up like all the little things. He took pictures of the Doberman pictures of one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, was in the car. Don't forget, tonight is Manifest. If you live locally, we have a big thing Thursday, t every first Thursday of the month uh -huh. at the church. And a little extended, just worship. We kind of let it go, some preaching. It's just a great time tonight. Yeah, 6.30, right? Or 7. No, it's 7. Starts at 7. Starts. And uh, don't forget also that uh, we have our big Manifest Revival coming up October 14th and 15th. That's, that's the 13th and 14th, but this is not a, an advertisement. <laughs> Also, we, we, advertising. we also sell mugs, and I'm teasing. Where we wake up. Where we wake up. It's so good to have you with us. Today we're going to be in John chapter 6 and verse 63, and, and we've been talking about uh, what your wife preached on. She Pastor Holly so preached good. this last weekend. I had so many people go, you know, could she preach more? So what they were saying is, uh, we want more of her and less of, I can't figure out what they want less of. Yeah, less of you. Oh, less of me. Okay, yeah, I didn't know right. what it was. Yeah, <laughs> More and less. <laughs> <laughs> she did such a wonderful job, so and, and uh, she talked about staying in your lane. Right. And uh, she she talked about how you know your lane is like your anointing, your purpose, your assignment in life, and then don't worry so much about everyone else's lane. I think that's a big thing. You know, I I was she was going to put it in. She just didn't have time. Is when you get in traffic. You ever been in like bumper to bumper traffic, and you have that car that just is always in all the other lanes, and it always makes me great joy. There comes a point where I pass them up. They've been changing lanes thirty two times. Yeah. Because every lane always looks. Oh, that's a faster lane. Yeah. Oh, that's the faster lane. Yeah. It's just like, just stay in your lane, relax in your lane. I like the one when you're driving and someone like angry passes you. Do you know, if you don't live oh, in Arizona, yeah. maybe you don't know what that is. But here in Arizona, we get angry passed. So you're driving along and all of a sudden someone goes, and then they cut in front of you and then they keep going. Right. What always makes me laugh though is when you get to the stoplight and you pull up, I always pull up next to them really slowly because they got all the way to the red <laughs> light <right>. before me. <laughs> well, we're all back to even again, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> John chapter 6 and verse 62, Pastor Holly said, um, one of the things she said, that I, uh, all the things she said were really amazing and revelatory, but go to the Word and not the world, she said. Go to the Word and not the right. world. And uh, she said it obliterates comparisons. When we're right. looking at that lane and we're thinking, man, that's well, how come that person got all those talents? How come they got all those gifts? They're right. so smart. I wish I looked like them. I wish I had their I life. wish I was five foot four. You know, here I am six two. I wish I was. <laughs> and I know it's hard to watch and go, man, I wish I was them. <laughs> and I, I wish I could do what they can do. And we can get into these comparisons. Right. And uh, and we get into this idea that, that there's something wrong with us. And we, we come into agreement with right. sometimes our insecurities what other people have said about us discouraging things. We look back at our past, our condemnation, our regrets, our shame. We can get caught into this cycle of I'm not as good as everything else. Or, Those lanes are a lot better than my lane. That car's a lot better than my car. And she said, you know what? Don't. You can eliminate comparisons if you just go to the Word instead of to the world. And so today let's go to the Word. John chapter 6 and verse 63. Jesus said this, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. So this is kind of the difference between the world right. and the word, isn't it? Because the, the, Jesus goes on to say that my, the words that I speak to you are spirit 
right. in their life. They're not the world. They're not the flesh. They're not worldly passions. They're not... You think about what, what the world has tried to do for all of us, because the enemy knows when you begin to believe that God made me the way that I am mm -hmm. and that he's got a big purpose on my life, you become an unstoppable force. Right. So starting from <laughs> as young back as most of us can remember, you go into school and right away the world is telling you everything that's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because I have a, 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 one of my close friends, Nate, he's six foot ten. So it's yeah. funny when we walk into like restaurants because I always tell people we're twins. I'm like, yeah, we're twins. <laughs> They're always like this. But well, it was funny to talk to him because obviously you and I know when we started school, we were teased because we were short. Find out what was funny is he was so insecure because he was always teased because he was big. Yeah, people were going to find something to dislike you about. No right? matter what. You big feet, little feet, right feet. Oh, she's just, you know, look at her. She's just too perfect. Yeah. That's what we're going to make fun of? That's is right. That their features are too good? Or yeah. Too well, they, they look angry all the time. Okay. Well, they smile. All they do is smile. Okay. That's... <laughs> But they just care about how they look. So, they don't care about how they look. So the world f starts because the enemy knows, like I said, if he, he can make you feel worthless, yeah. make you feel like, well, I should be like this person, then he can slow you down from God's best in your life. Yeah. And that's where Holly was saying, okay, don't believe everything they said about you. Believe what God's word says about you. Yeah. What does his word say? It says, I got, you said this even this last Sunday too, is I have the mind of Christ. I'm smart. Yeah, I'm a smart. I'm a smart person. Yes, and so you, you can say, "Oh my God, I am blessed. I am prosperous. Yeah. I am healthy. I yeah. am." And you can go through the scriptures and find out that what God said about you. Exactly, not what the world. So I go to the Word, not to the world. And every time I get attacked with discouragement or defeat, or I get attacked with envy, you know, envy is going to come sometimes. Jealousy is going to come. Selfish ambition, bitter envy, these, these things the enemy wants to bring and tempt us with things. It's so simple. You just resist the enemy and he will flee from you. And it's just a better life. You spend your whole day in jealousy about something, complaining, right. well, they don't deserve what they got. Oh, they, that's so good. Right? They don't yeah. deserve that. I, that person is, is, they're not godly. They're Sally at the office. She didn't even work. Has she got the promotion? The, yeah. And, and so we, we ruin our own day. We mess up our own atmosphere, our own emotions, uh, and, and it's fine. You know, God forgives us. He loves us. He's not mad at us. Of course not. But we're messing with our own future, aren't we? It's just so much better to be like, you know what? God did it for them. He can do it for me. I love that. You know, because then you can celebrate when other people get blessed. Yeah. Because a lot of the times you don't know what other people are going through. That's right. And you also don't know, especially at social media. And Holly said that is social media makes you fall into this comparison contrast and makes you feel bad. Sure. Then I believe then just turn it off. That's how I believe in life. I believe if I'm doing something that doesn't make me feel Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it really makes me downer, then I don't listen to it. Yeah. I, I don't do it. I remember that in I'm high school. I'm awful at social media. In high school, I, and I don't care if you listen to heavy metal, I just don't. I know for me, when heavy metal was playing, it just didn't make me feel right. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't like the way. I, I liked to listen to some Survivor. That's what I liked. I liked some oh, good. Yeah. yeah, I like. I like those. And so, yes, if you can listen to heavy metal and it's good, great for you. But if it, if you listen to something and it's not making you feel good about you yeah. and what you can do and you accomplish, then turn it off. If watching the news really affects you, and makes you very angry at the other party or, yeah. or the other people, why are you doing it? They just turn it off. I want, to, I want everything that goes in me to build me up, to lift me up, to encourage me, and make me feel like I can win. That's right. And so the world says I'm worthless, but God says I'm priceless. That's good. The world says my mistakes reflect who I really am, the whole me. You know, we understand the whole person, so we like to dig up the mistakes and find out what people have done wrong. And, you know, the world will remember your mistakes forever. Oh, my gosh. But God will remember my mistakes no more. Gone. God says my mistakes don't define me. He tells me that I'm forgiven and that in him I live and move and have my being. Do you see the difference between what the world is saying and what God is saying? The world says people are bad and to be hated. But God says that all people are to be loved. Pray for those who hate you. Forgive and do, the, do good to those who do evil to you. The world says God doesn't care and allows suffering and maybe doesn't even exist, but the Word teaches me that God withholds no good thing and that Jesus came that I might have life and have it to the fullest. So good, James. So what am I going to do, world or Word? Every single day, if I pick the Word, it's funny how the world almost always says the exact opposite of what God it's says. It's literally so You almost crazy. don't even have to read your Bible. 
<laughs> you just, could just listen to the world and go, all right, I'm going to do the opposite of that. Exact opposite. They're like, oh, just sleep with her. Just sleep with him. Who cares? you got to test drive the car before you get married. <laughs> go like this. Go, I don't even have to read the Bible. I know that that's probably a wrong right, a assumption wrong to make. And what can I do? And, that, and, that, and we don't assign condemnation and shame because that also comes from the devil. We simply go, that's a godly principle. I'm going to do that. Right. This is what God says. I'm going to believe that. This is what God's up to. This is what Jesus did. I'm going to do what Jesus does. I like that. It's 180. Yeah. Just do a 180. Just do a 180. 180 from everything that the world tells you to do. Just do the opposite. That seems to be God's God's word, God's life for our lives. And so begin to think opposite. Begin to think about yourself. This week, just try it for one week and see where you end up. That, you know what? I'm going to think nothing but good. I'm going to think nothing but positive. I'm going to only allow my mind to, to have those thoughts. And I'm just going to have God's Word playing in my mind all week. And you'll see that you live life at a higher attitude, which then begins to take your life to a higher altitude. That's right. Pray over their day. You pray. Dear Father, Lord, we ask that you just bless their day, Lord. Mm. I ask, Lord, that you just help us to live life at that higher level by going to your word and not what the world has said. I don't care what the world has said about me because they just said it out of their junk. I care about what the Creator has said about me. What did the Creator say I can do? I can do all things through Christ Jesus. What did the Creator say that I can have, that I can live life to its fullest, that my mistakes don't define me, but you define me, that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus, that whatever I put my hands to will be blessed and be prospered. i got the mind of Christ. I am made in God's likeness and in God's image, and God doesn't make junk. He's given me everything that I need in this life to live a life of purpose and destiny. I ask that you bless them, guide them, direct them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, watch this clip. So rather than go to the world, world, we go to the Word. Why? Why is that the solution? I'll tell you why. Because you go to the Word, and the Word reminds you you were made in the image and the likeness of a king. You go to the Word, and you're reminded, I'm called to rule and to reign in this life and in my lane. I know that I know that I'm safest and most successful when I'm in my lane, and I'm not going to move out of my lane. And when you step into that, there's a confidence and a boldness that comes out of you. You love who you are. You say, I was created this way on purpose for a purpose. And you know what? It obliterates comparison. You shut comparison down when you love who you are. And you know what it does? It frees you up to love who other people have been created to be and where they're headed and where they're going. You get celebratory for your friends. I'm so extremely grateful for intersecting lanes in this life. Aren't you grateful for the intersection? I'm so grateful that the northbound, southbound traffic stops so that I can pass through when I'm traveling west and eastbound. I can go through safely and successfully because they're they're watching the signs that are directing them and on their lane. Gratitude will always shut down comparison and envy and jealousy. And every one of us in the house today, we have a reason. We have something to be grateful for. Every one of us can find something. If you walked into the house today and you have plans for lunch, you have friends or family to have lunch with, and you can be grateful for that. You have finances that you can go out to eat or make a meal with your family. If you're listening to me today, you can be grateful that you have one of your five senses that are functioning. If you're watching me while you're listening, I just found two reasons for you to be grateful. Like, share, subscribe, yes, thumbs yes. up. If you are a new subscriber, type in where you're from and that you are a new subscriber. We love to read that on Wednesdays. I do. Yeah. And uh, don't forget about our manifest. That's right. Uh, the manifest. Yes. And what is the manifest? The, it's the manifest. Is, is it a, like some kind of French is event? The manifest. The manifest is, is going to be the event we of a, a year. We have a fest and we man it. it. <laughs> to make a manifest. The manifestival. Oh, manifestive. <laughs> It's the festive for the rest of us. Festivus? Festivus? What? That was from Seinfeld, Festivus. Why is that a manifest and not a woman fest? And now fe- we will do the feats of strength. Why is it not a woman fest? <laughs> Why is it going to be a manifest? A woman fest? Oh, because that's just how the, that's just how the world is today. It's just always I about the men. everybody's watching. Manifest. <laughs> we just always want to know, has anybody watched this long? Will we just babble? Yeah. Let us know by saying woman fest. Yeah. A man- woman manifest? What if it was a manifest? Oh, that's better than a fest. It's just like bacon and hot dogs and hamburgers. Every it's a man feast. What's a fest? 
Like, is that just it's like, like a, a festival, a, like a like a, an event, oh, like a okay. big deal? Uh-huh. But a feast is even, to me, more exciting. But, but the word manifest is really about God's glory being made visible in our life. Like, it's about... To the men. We're praying and believing God. No, it's manifest. It's just God's glory man, manifest in the world. Stop talking about healing and let's see God heal. Yeah. Stop talking about miracles and let's see the miracles because God wants to show his glory. Oh, it's going to be good. Yeah. Manifest. Manifest. Manifesta. Manifesta ish. If it was a bubble gun, it'd be manifest ish. If it were a dinosaur, it would be a manifestorus rex. <laughs> if it was a president, it would be Abraham manifest. If it, were, That's not even good. if it were a coffee, it'd be a grande manifest extra foam. <laughs> no soy. They're still watching. Why are you still watching? Why don't you go away? I, I wouldn't watch. Be, I wouldn't be here. No. I, I'm annoyed that I, I am actually here. am not here because <laughs> the manifest I, joke was in. I don't think it was funny even at the beginning. I, <laughs> like when we first started, it wasn't it was funny. Horrible. And it never got funny. You know what, though? But if you do it long enough, it doesn't. It, it always didn't, gets no, funny. It never got funny. Mana, you're manifest. <laughs> the only thing that's funny is that we're still doing it. That's the only thing that's funny. <laughs> and they're still watching. It's like go Patrick Starr. Little, 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 little. You have nothing to do. Little, little, little. You're little watching league. still. Little, little, give me one of those. Little, little, little. Little, little, little. Yes, little, yes, little, that thing. Little. Yes, let me blow that. There. They're still here. No, they're not. They're gone. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow.